content in node b transport data part 9 so endpoint mode how to add a user plane host so user plane host is referring to the e node b ip but this one is in endpoint mode so basically we add the host id and the local ip is refers to the service ip in some cases the signal ip and the service ip will be separated in some cases they will be sharing so let's see some example of the user plane host so this is the command so list user plane host So I'm going to run, rerun the command for an, another base station. So for the base, both base station, they are using link mode only. So no endpoint mode. In some cases, for signaling, they will use link mode. For user plane, they will use endpoint mode. So you can use hybrid also. So either one also can be used. We can use a mixed mode or you can use as a whole link mode or endpoint mode. So these are some of the examples. So next will be at user plane peer. So, user plane peer is referring to your S gateway IP. So, we need to add the peer ID and the peer IP address referring to S gateway IP. So, auto mode indicates that automatically the signaling will be added. So, endpoint mode. Next is endpoint mode group. So, basically this endpoint mode will actually, when you enable it, you are actually binding the host and peer. So usually, the SCTP control plane will have its own endpoint group. User plane will have its own endpoint group. In some cases, you can also share. So that is the major difference. So endpoint group is basically the binding process of your host and the peer from both SCTP and user plane. So endpoint mode need to be binded to SCTP and user plane host and peer. So you will have to bind them to the endpoint group. So these are the command for the SCTP host binding to the endpoint group and user plane host binding to the endpoint group. So let's see some examples of the command. So we don't have the command corresponding. So this one is actually how you add the user plane peer. So these are the commands where you add the user plane ID and peer IP. You also can add the endpoint group, endpoint group ID. After that, you have to do the binding. So, SCTP host to endpoint group. So, this is the command. Binding is very easy. The endpoint group you bind to the host. Then you have the add SCTP peer to endpoint group. All right. We also have add user plane host, user head user plane host to endpoint group So this is add user plane host to endpoint group. So basically the same endpoint group we bind to the user plane host. We also have add user plane host peer to endpoint group. So we have to bind the endpoint group to the user plane peer ID. So in my example, when I list the endpoint group, so since they are using link mode, it will not have any configuration. This is only applicable for endpoint mode. So let's look into the interface, endpoint mode, add an S1 object. So just the command changed, but the information are the same. You need to add S1, CN operator ID. Besides that, you need to bind the endpoint group of control plane and user plane over here. So that is the only difference. So MME release is important and make sure that they have the same value configured at the MME level. So basically, some of the informations are added equivalent to S1 interface, but this the command has changed. So let's look into this command. What is the difference? So when you list the S1, 
you won't be able to see anything because we configured S1 interface. So when you add the S1, So basically, these are the information you need to add S1 ID, CN operator ID, control plane endpoint group ID, and user plane. So this is the final binding process. So next is X2 object. So this one is for a neighbor site. So when you add the X2 ID, you need to also bind the neighbor endpoint group with the control plane and the user plane. So this will be more suitable for a peer in node B. So let's look into some example. So when you add X2, you will need to add X2 ID, CN operator ID, and control plane and user plane dedicated to the peer in node B. It, wouldn't, it won't be the same as S1 interface. This one, you have to create another one. So this is considered a brand new information. Next, last but not least, we will add the OAM channel. So OAM channel is very important because we will bind the local IP from the inode B side towards the peer IP, which is MAE. So we need to bind inode B to MAE over here. So this is important because this is the main remote maintenance link between your actual site to the remote site. So we have also need to add the OM channel in the device IP. So we need to add the logical IP. Then after that, we bind that in the OM channel. So let's look into this command. So we may need to list the OM channel. So these are the information. So OAM channel, we have the local IP bind with the peer IP MAE. So when you display the OAM channel, you will see the status whether the OAM channel is up or down. So this will indicate the remote maintenance link status. So basically, OM channel status is normal and in use. So that means the link is up. So when you add the OM channel, so these are the information that you need to add. So basically, you will add the local IP, peer IP, local mask and the peer mask. So let's look into simplified S1 configuration. So simplified configuration is suitable when S1 control plane and user plane of the inode B use the same IP address. So in this case, they are using the same IP address. So the rate, the MOs in the rate, okay, the mobile object in the rate need manually need to be manually configured. So this is belongs to your inode B IP. The MOs in black are automatically generated by the inode B. So this is automated. Okay, so all these black color ones are automated. So E node B automatically adds MO to the endpoint group without a manual intervention. So this only applies for the endpoint mode, not link mode. So these are the command for the simplified S1 configuration. Key point one, you must set global transport parameter where endpoint configure mode, this part, will must be set to S1 simple mode for the category earlier. So let's look into how to do this. We need to set the GT transparent endpoint configure mode to S1 simple mode 1. So we will set the GT transparent and we will look for the endpoint mode category. So endpoint mode configure, it you have to Click S1 simple mode to select the earlier solution. So this is how we do it from this command. So it will become like this. So simple mode is activated as one. And number two, for key point number two, configure S1C. So this is Consider signaling command. So add the SCTP host and peer and select simplified mode configuration. So when you add SCTP host, you must switch this to off. 
So this is how we select this in the SCTP host and SCTP peer command. SCTP host belongs to eNode PIP and SCTP peer is referring to MME IP. So both need to be off. So I can show you from the command directly. So what what are the changes need to be done when you add SCTP host? So when you add the host, you must change this to simple mode of this part this section so same goes to when you add SCTP peer so simple mode you switch to off so this category Q&A session simplified configuration is suitable when the S1 control plane and user plane of the E node B Use the same IP address. Yes or no? Yes, this statement is correct. So, the summary of this section, eNodeB transport data, we have learned about endpoint mode, how to add a user plane host, how to add a user plane peer, how to add an endpoint group, how to add SCTP user plane host peer to the endpoint group, how to add an S1 object, how to add an X2 object, how to add an OM channel, what is simplified S1 configuration? What is the key point one and what is the key point two? Hope you enjoy the session. Thank you. Bye.